you're doing well tonight. Glad you're here. Hope you've had a good day. I want you to stand up. We're going to have a time of fellowship to start things off. You turn around and greet those who are beside you, around you. Make them feel welcome this morning. We'll sing in just a second. Give me a good amen. 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 Well, if you can't shout about Jesus, what can you shout about, right? Well, thank you for being here, ushers. You come, and we're going to take up our tithes and offerings tonight. Thank you for what you gave in 2015, and uh, thank you for what you're going to give. I'm going to go ahead and claim it that the money that God puts in your pocket, you're going to put in this plate, all right? And um, but we're uh, we're glad you're here. Looking forward to tonight's uh, service. Let's bow for a word of prayer, Brother Kenny Bell. Would you lead us in prayer? Mm-hmm. Amen. You may 
be seated. Savior Jesus Christ, won't you stand and sing this chorus with us? I sing praises to your name. mighty God. In the name of Jesus, people are healed. Think about that as we sing. Say amen again. Is God good? 
Amen. All the time he's good. Thank you for being here tonight. Will you pray with me, Father? Your name is glorious. Your name is awesome. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Now, Lord, as we've sung praises to you, it's been awesome, fun, enjoyable. Father, we ask that you will help us now to listen to your word as it's proclaimed and preached. May our hearts, our minds be receptive to what you have to say to us. Be with our pastor now as he comes. In Jesus' precious and holy name we do pray. Amen. You may be seated. Do love those songs, and we do have a lot to give God glory about. He has been very good to us, and we are thankful for his goodness this evening. Well, tonight is our State of the Church address. We have a number of our folks, um, even some of our, our board members not able to be here tonight. We had uh, in our community uh, um, a young man by the name of Brad Smith um, took his life this week and uh, touched a lot of families even in our own church. And so the uh, visitation is this evening, and so a lot of those um, are there tonight. But, um, but I'm glad you're here. And I'm excited to talk about what God has in store for New Life Church um, in the coming year. Uh, this has been a tradition now for uh, 12 years, uh, the State of the Church Address. Um, as I, as your pastor, much like the President of the United States addresses the nation, uh, in just a few weeks he'll give a State of the Union Address. I've chosen on the first Sunday of every year uh, to give what we call the state of the church. And what state is our church in? Not North Carolina, by the way. What, what condition uh, is our church in? Where, where have we come and where are we going? Uh, I would say that the body of Christ across the globe seems to have less influence and less light than it ever has before. It's filled with compromise, hypocrisy, and decay. There's less unity and more division than ever before. I never thought it would be so hard to, to unify a group of people that have so much in common. You say, well, what do we have in common? We're from different places. How many were born and raised in North Carolina? Raise your hand. How many were not? Unclean, outcast, no. No, but we had a lot of people that, that were born and raised in, in different parts of the country. Now, how many of you have lived in New Bern for more than 10 years? Raise your hand. How many have not? We, we are diverse. We are different. Uh, we come from different places. We've been here uh, for, for different reasons. How many of you are... Um, retired or semi-retired? Raise your hand. All right. How many are not? Raise your hand. How many wish you were? <laughs> yeah. We're, 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 we're in different places, different stages of life. Um, how many of you have grandkids? All right. You got grandkids, right? How many of you don't? How many of you that do wish you'd had those first? All right. We're at different stages. We're from different places. And yet there's never been a group of people. Now, please hear this. There's never been a group of people that have ever had more in common than the body of Christ. Because with all of our differences, the one great thing we have in common is Jesus. Is Jesus. And we have Jesus in common. And yet with all of that in common, we have more division less unity we are more distracted probably than any culture that has ever walked the planet it seems that the church is less determined than any church age since the book of acts and yet overall if we want to talk about the state of the church as a whole we could spend hours talking about the state of the church abroad but tonight we are gathered to talk about the state of this church. I believe remembering is very biblical. I do not believe you remember to a level where you live in the past, but I do believe that remembering the past can always help us in the future. 
Uh, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, it was Solomon remembering, the entire book was remembering the, the, the days of his life that he so wasted. And now he's coming to his senses and he said, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. It was a psalmist David in Psalm 105, verse 5, that said, Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Remember. It was the Apostle Paul that said many times for us to remember not just where we have come from, but also remember those mistakes that the Israelites made so we wouldn't re remake those mistakes. We would not make those mistakes again. It was Joshua in Joshua 4. Has said unto the people of God, Pass over before the ark of the Lord, your God, in the midst of Jordan. Take up you every one stone upon his shoulders, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. That this may be a sign among you that when your children ask their father in time to come, saying, What mean these stones? Then ye shall answer them, and said that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of God. When it passed over Jordan, then the waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. The Bible over and over again tells us that it is a healthy thing to remember. And as I reflect on 2015, I'm going to be extremely honest with you. 2015 was not the year that I set out for it to be. Now, don't get me wrong. We saw some neat, God-sized things happen in 2015. We saw salvations, baptisms, new families, visitors. I believe a spread-out influence that our church had never experienced before across this community. We did things like change the name of our church, which, by the way, is a pretty big deal. We went to two morning services. You say, are they working? Well, this morning we had 87, 88 in the first service. Uh, we had 300-something in the second service. I think overall we had 440 people in church this morning. We had new men and new women's Bible studies. We did home studies and home groups. We had a record-setting attendance in our Easter service. Had almost 900 people on the property. We had new staff that God sent our way, which we'll talk about in a moment. And now is getting settled and adjusted. How did it go? Did we see some good things? Yeah, we did. I believe we touched the globe in ways that sometimes we forget. We sent a couple named Wayne and Phyllis Houghton to Indonesia. The Kimbrels to California. The Baines to Virginia, the McNeese's to Texas. The church is touching the globe like probably it never has before. We had a record setting God's Man Conference attendance with just under 500 pre registered. We had new staff. Uh, Brother Matt Berry joined our staff this year. Miss Melissa Nelson joined our staff this year. Brother Dan Houghton joined our staff this year. Mr. Stuart Barrow joined our staff this year on a part time basis. His wife, Miss Brandy, will be joining it in January, which is January right now. Welcome aboard. New Bern Christian Academy, for lack of better terms, is exploding. We have room for 165 kids. We have over 160 on campus. We had 70 new students this year at New Bern Christian Academy. 70. That's over twice as many students as we had total the first year of our existence four and a half years ago. The goal of everything that we did will not change, and yet I would say as I look back at 2015, I am a builder, not a maintainer. I like to grow, don't like to shrink. I like to move forward, don't like to slide back. And to say that this was a frustrating year is an understatement. In fact, I hate the fact that our church did not grow in some areas this past year that I thought it would. The truth is, looking back, we lost some people for some ridiculous reasons. The summer alone, we lost 25 faithful members of our church because of relocation. 25 faithful tithers, 
faithful servants, supporters of our ministry because of relocation. Some of the things that we went through in 2015, to be honest, have been hard to get over. And yet I would say through it all, God has been good. I would be as honest enough tonight to tell you that 2015 may have been one of the most discouraging years of ministry I have ever had. To fight back discouragement would be an understatement on a daily basis. And yet through it all, God has been good. Through it all, His mercy endured forever. In 2016, I am hopeful that we can reclaim some things that the enemy has taken away. In fact, I am purposed in my heart to lead that charge, to take back some things that do not belong to Satan, but belong to God. It's going to take prayer. It's going to take time. It's going to take unity. Most importantly, it's going to take the very help of God, but I still believe that New Life Church is a place that God can add to daily. Don't you? What well, will be the goal in everything we do in 2016? It'll be the gospel to the globe. It'll be the glory of God. It'll be growth to the body of Christ. Everything we do, in fact, as our staff has met over the last several weeks, we have talked about things that we have done, things that we're looking to do, and we have based it on a criteria. Does it bring glory to God? Does it spread the gospel to the globe? And does it offer growth to the body? And if it does, we keep it. If it, do, if it does not, we ax it. It's gone. And so what are things that we're looking to do? Well, first of all, church, we're looking to pray. And I want you to know something. Get used to praying because this is going to be a praying church. We've got 16 families who have partnered with us to be a part of our cottage prayer meetings. They will host a quarterly cottage prayer meetings. We, meeting. We will have a cottage prayer meeting every single week. A house opened up for God's people in this church and in any church for that matter to gather and pray. And I want you to be a part of it. I want you to make up your mind that as much as you can, you are going to invade the homes of new life and you are going to do it for one reason. That's to come together and to pray. Not just for revival that comes a couple times a year, but for daily revival that can live in our hearts. How are these things going to happen? Well, I'm excited about these prayer meetings. I'm excited about some of the family events, the church events that we have scheduled we have scheduled in January, the end of January, last Saturday of this month, is another movie night where, if you saw it in the bulletin, our adults and teenagers will be in the fellowship hall and we'll be at the New Life Theater. And uh, we will be watching the movie War Room. So if you haven't seen it, don't watch it until the end of the month, all right? And if you have, it doesn't matter because I've seen it a number of times and it gets better and better and better. And then the kids, we will, uh, Brother Matt's doing a series this month through our, our junior ministry on, based on uh, our emotions and how God made us. And we're using the theme of the movie Inside Out. And uh, they'll be watching that uh, in teen church on that same evening. Uh, how many of you were able to go to our, our church-wide skate night a few months ago? How many of you went? A number of you did. We had a great, great crowd. We're going to do that again. Uh, we're looking to do several movie nights. We, we talked to the bowling alley about uh, renting the uh, bowling alley and going bowling and having some kind of tournament to see if some of you are as good as you say you are. We want to spend time together as a church through some of these activities. We're going to step it up when it comes to, to prayer. We're going to step it up when it comes to spending quality time with our families and our church family. We're going to step it up when it comes to outreach. Our outreach has been like a roller coaster over the last 13 and a half years, and that's just not here, that's everywhere. It seems like one of the things you have to do to continue to keep people motivated is change your outreach programs. And so we're going to be adding a, and instituting a new outreach program sometime February to March, but Instead of meeting on Monday nights, we're going to go back to meeting on Sunday nights. And I'm going to meet with everyone of our people who are interested in going on outreach that particular week. 
As soon as the service is over, we're going to meet right up front. We're going to go ahead and give you your visits and give you Monday and Tuesday because what I know is not everybody can go visiting on Monday. But sometimes you can go visiting during the day. Sometimes you can go at night. And so Monday at 6 o'clock doesn't always work. The truth is when school is in, it doesn't always work for us to be able to be here. But I still believe we need to be out visiting. Amen? I still believe we need to be ministering to people, encouraging folks, uh, thanking those that come and visiting our church by giving them a gift, making sure that we round people up that are away from God and we can use our outreach program to do that. We'll be meeting on Sunday nights after church. We have two major outreach months, the month of March and the month of September, where the entire month will be filled with outreach activities. The month of March, we're calling it Neighborhood Knock. Month. We're leading to our Easter service, which is the last Sunday of March, and our friend and family day. And we are encouraging, and we're going to be able to track it some way digitally. We're going to track how many doors we knock and how many areas we get knocked. But the truth is, if you live in a neighborhood or if you live with somebody beside you, we're going to challenge you to knock your neighborhood. And we're going to give you the supplies to do that, building up to our big Easter service and our Easter kids extravaganza. But then in September, we're going to do our Each One Reach One month, building up to, to a big day on the last Sunday of September, trying to get people in, trying to get them back into church, back to church Sunday. You remember several years ago we did that. We're going to do it again this year. We're looking in some capacity to start our van ministry back. Not like the bus ministries of years ago, but I know that there are a lot of people who need a ride to church, and if they want to come, we want to provide a ride for them to come. And so we want to try to start that, and we need workers to do that because it sounds good for me to talk about it, but it can't happen unless you do it. And so we need volunteers for that. This year's Love Loud, instead of doing it for one day, we did it a week long, and it was amazing to see how broad of a stroke we were able to paint across our town and how much influence that I believe we had in that very week, and we're going to do it a week again uh, this year we've got upward that's coming up and it's starting a few weeks later than uh, than normal uh, which we think hopefully will help us when it comes to dry weather and pretty weather and pretty days for for upward we're excited about the outreach that God has for us but the truth is New Life Church needs to step it up when it comes to outreach New Life Church needs to step it up when it comes to Sunday school first of all you need to come to Sunday school right several reasons why you need to come to Sunday school number one because I said so feel like I'm in my house again but number two the fellowship you get with your class it's one thing to come in here and corporately worship with hundreds of people but it's another thing totally when you get in a smaller setting in a more intimate setting when you can really get to know folks you can really understand where they are and who they are and how to bear their burdens so you need to come to Sunday school for fellowship but but I would say primarily you need to come to Sunday school because of the teaching of God's Word you can never get enough of God's Word if you believe that God's Word is at a premium you believe that you need to hear God's Word and you need to be taught God's Word and by the way if you don't feel like that you've attained if you're not up here with your Bible knowledge well guess what you need to come to Sunday school and somebody can help you climb that ladder we need to step it up when it comes to Sunday school uh, the Bruce is over our Sunday school department now and they had a, a meeting tonight we'll be having trainings and campaigns and meetings throughout the year to try to motivate you and to try to help equip our, our teachers for Sunday school my church 242 class is now meeting in Sunday school and I'm reworking the class to, to shorten it just a little bit uh, so that I can enjoy Sunday school a little bit too. But I believe moving the services to 9 and to 11 with Sunday school in the middle has been a help. How many Sunday school teachers are glad for that? I think, I think you are. And uh, I've enjoyed that thoroughly. We're going to step it up when it comes to Sunday school. We're going to step it up when it comes to discipleship discipleship I'm writing right now and in, in accumulating material for what I've entitled the new life journey it's a new discipleship program 75 week discipleship program 
We want to be able to take someone from the time they get saved. And the goal is at the end, not for them to be able to, to live the Christian life on their own. That's not the goal. If that's the only goal we have in discipleship, we've missed the boat. The goal in discipleship is not for them just to be able to walk on their own. The goal in discipleship is to take someone who has been saved and disciple them to the point where at the end they can turn around and make disciples. And that's the goal. And so with this 75-week program, we're going to have to train some people. This is going to be tailored for New Life Church. I think you'll love the curriculum once you see it and how it... It's broken down. It's not 75 weeks every week. It, it kind of begins to, 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 to wean the, the convert off and makes them walk on their own two feet. And, and yet I believe it's going to be a great training tool. We have a desperate need at New Life Church, not just to grow wide, but also to grow deep. How many remember the song, Deep and Wide? Truth is, that could be a theme for a lot of what we do in discipleship that in order for us to grow wide, we've got to grow deep first. And when we grow deep, I believe God will bless us enough to grow wide. We've got to disciple. We've got to train. We've got to step it up when it comes to discipleship. We have to step it up in our leadership. I'm talking to pastoral staff, faculty and staff, board members, deacons, trustees, finance committee. I'm talking to Sunday school teachers, junior church workers. I'm talking to anyone who's involved in anything. I'm talking to nursery workers. I'm talking to kids' church workers. I'm talking to anyone. We've got to step it up. We have to have the mind of Christ. If you'll remember in Philippians chapter 2, turn there if you will. Philippians chapter 2. If I were to give the book of Philippians a synopsis in order to, to meet up what Paul said in chapter 3, verse 14, to press toward the mark, I believe in chapter 1, I believe that we would see that Paul said, if you want to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, first of all, you got to stop making it about yourself. And you got to make everything about God. I hope that's our heartbeat tonight. I hope it's not about you. The truth is, you'll get your feelings hurt real quick and you'll want to go somewhere else when you make it all about you. You'll sit there like a knot on a log and you won't get involved in anything when you make it about you. But when you make it about God, that's when the Holy Spirit of God can do some explosive things in our church when we make it about Him. And I believe if we're going to press toward the mark, we've got to make it about Him. But number two, we've got to have the mind of Christ. We've got to have the mind of Christ. He said in verse number 5, he said, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We have to be in one accord in our mind. We have to make sure that, that, that it's not your opinion versus my opinion that matters. The only opinion that matters is God's opinion. And if we're going to press toward what God has for us, if we're going to keep stepping up, as it were, we're going to have to have the mind of Christ. It can't be about me. Some people step up so, so they can let people see how high they are. Hey, look at me. I'm way up here. And you're not. Which, by the way, this is a great view. But that's not why God wants you to step it up. God doesn't want you to step it up for your glory. He wants you to step it up for His glory. But then also, as we step it up and as we, as we step up together, we have to have the same mind. We have to be in one accord. And if we're going to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, we have to have the mind of Christ. We have to have the mind of Christ. But I also believe in chapter 3, if we're going to press toward the mark, we've got to know who God is. Verse 10 says that I may know him. that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. The reason Paul knew what direction he was going in is because he finally knew who God was. That's why discipleship is so important. You say, well, preacher, are we only going to disciple those that are new converts? No. How many of you would say, it doesn't matter how long you've been saved, but how many of you would say, 
that, that in your Christian life you have probably never truly been discipled. Raise your hand. That's a lot of good Christians. And so what we're going to do is when we launch this new life journey sometime late spring, early summer, what we're going to do is anyone who wants to be discipled, we are going to, to partner you up with somebody and we are going to personally disciple you. And this discipleship is one on two. Because I don't believe it's just for new converts. I believe the strength of our church will be the, the depth of our roots in Christ. We've got to step it up. We're going to press toward the mark. We've got to know him. And then we've got to realize in chapter 4 there's several things. We've got to realize that if we're going to press toward the mark, we only do it in the strength of God because it was Paul that said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I can't climb any higher on this ladder without God's strength. Now, the truth is, if this was two weeks ago, I couldn't even have climbed that ladder to begin with. But now I got two good feet and about 70, 75% on this one. You know what? I'm feeling pretty good. And the truth is, even if I'm feeling pretty good, if I was 100 and 100, I'm only going to climb as far as God allows me to. And so we've got to do it in God's strength. We've got to step it up, church. And yet I believe there's more exciting things. We have an exciting calendar planned. We're hopefully going to have a directory here in the next two weeks. How many of you say, say amen if you're thankful for that? And if you're not, well, then just sit there and look mean. That way you can know who such and such is. We're actually going to put, there's going to be a page online as well so we can keep it updated. And so throughout the year, as you know, as people join the church and come to our church, we're going to continue to update it online and our members, you'll have a code where you can go in and punch it in. You can kind of see even new pictures, and we'll print them every year. And that way you can get an update, and we're going to print it with a calendar. You're going to have a six-month calendar that's going to be printed with it so you can see what's going on so you don't plan a vacation during revival. That's bad mojo, folks. Don't do that. I'm excited about this year. Over Christmas break, we were able to take a few days away and, and uh, just clear our head, heads a little bit. Tomorrow, uh, Christy and I and Bruce and Crystal will go to, to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and suffer for Jesus for a few days. Um, but there's a pastor's principles conference there that we're going to, and we've been to every year now. And it has served to be a, an encouragement to us, but it's also served as a big help for our school. And, um, and so I'm excited about going there, but sometimes when I'm able to get away, and, and you'll know that I've got a several revival schedule where I'll be away preaching, and you need to understand something, that is healthy for your preacher. Um, it's healthy in several reasons. Number one, it's healthy because when I'm gone, sometimes you, at least you make me believe that you miss me. And when I take my family, you really make me believe that you miss me. Um... But then secondly, when I'm away doing something that another thing that God has called me to do, and that's to spread the gospel across the globe, it allows me to focus on our church in a different way and to kind of clear the, some of the cobwebs in my mind and to quiet some of the noise so I can really focus in on the needs of, of our people. And, and this, this past year when I was able to get away a few times and, and preach, uh, this is when this theme was really born in my heart because I personally understand I have to step it up. And my plans are in 2016 to do that. I would say one of the most exciting things that I believe God has for us in 2016 is a building project. With the needs of our school, 160 kids, 165 spots, I don't have enough, just to put it plainly, I don't have enough room for the rear ends that will be here next year. We don't have spots for them. And uh, if you'll remember, we came to the church a few months ago and we were entertaining and, and I, I told our board early on and, and even told the church I believed it was God's will to pursue a piece of a property and a building uh, on a different campus. Um, and we began to pray and we were just waiting for God to either open more doors or shut them and God shut those doors and we're at total peace about that. But I believe what it did was it allowed us to start the conversation of something we need to do. And that's build. 
Um, we need to build for the benefit of the school and for the benefit of the church. You say, what's the benefit of the school? Well, number one, space. This building that we're proposing to you, and, and there's a couple pictures up there, guys. And this is just a, this is a picture of a color rendering. So this is not high quality or anything. This is kind of the building we're looking at. Go to the, the next one, too. Um, you can kind of see it. Uh, the brickwork will match. Uh, we've been meeting with some builders, trying to get some budgets together and numbers, and, and our board's met a number of times. We'll talk about that in just a second. But, but th a building like this would offer us in its first stage, and this would be the first stage. Um, it would offer us five classrooms. It would offer us an additional kitchen. It would offer us a basketball court. Um, it would offer us some, some additional restrooms and things like that. The, the benefit to the school is we'd be able to move our high school over there, which would give more space for our, our lower elementary and for our middle school here to be able to expand. Our capacity would go from, and we'll come back to that one, guys. You can take that one off. Um, our capacity will go from 165 kids to about 210 kids, 215 kids, which you say, what happens at that point? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but it will expand us for a few years, 215. We could squeeze, probably if every kid was in the right spot, we could squeeze about 225 kids on this property. It would expand our total property as far as facilities to about 45,000 square feet. With the air-conditioned units that would come into this building, we would add that, those to these, and we'd have about 30 air-conditioned units. How many understand that utilities would be a lot, and they are a lot now? But this is something we need. Space and athletics. We have an athletic program. If you're going to have a school with a high school this year, we have to rent gyms. We have to travel, and there's a large expense with traveling and having an off-campus site. We have to be an inconvenience to other uh, facilities such as Tabernacle and Unity. And uh, it's nothing like having your own facility to be able to do girls volleyball, uh, girls and boys basketball. We've got soccer. We've got uh, golf. We've got a golf team for the boys this year. We've got a lot of athletic things that we could even expand to, not to mention with all of the rain, our elementary teachers would say they're tired of 45 straight days of inside recess. Uh, amen? Yeah, hallelujah. They want to speak in tongues. And so um, we need a facility to be able to help the school with a lot of these needs, but not to mention on the church side. It would help us with space. It would help us with Sunday school space. It would help us drastically with Awanas in our kids' ministry to be able to have a, a place where they can have Awanas at and really have the, the Awana arena like we're supposed to. It would help us with things like God's Man Conference. Have you seen 500 men packed in that fellowship hall? They, they look like they want to eat, eat each other, you know? And we need to spread out for that. What about homecoming? What about a place where we could, when we do Easter, we actually could have a meal for Easter and, and be able to house eight or 900 people in a facility? And what about Ignite? We're going to do Ignite again this October. And it would be good to, to have a backup plan or even have the service on the inside and be able to host 1,000 people under our own roof for Ignite. You've got teen activities. I would tell you that as a teenager or as a youth pastor in Amory, Mississippi, the greatest asset we had in our youth ministry was the fact we had a gym. And it was a calling card of ministering to young people, not to mention the outreach events that we can do. There's a great, a great deal of use for the church and for the school. But we desperately need it. You say, can we afford it? I would say two things. Absolutely, we can afford it. I'm going to prove that to you in a moment. And then I don't think we can afford not to. You say, where would it go? Go to that, uh, that survey scale, Corey. Uh, this is a, a scale given to us by Simmons and Simmons Surveying. Um, James has helped us with this. You can see uh, to my right and your right, you can see the proposed classrooms and gym. The, fellow, the existing fellowship hall is this building right here. Uh, the wing that comes off of that, of course, is our elementary wing and our Sunday school wing here. And then the rest of our property and our buildings are up here. The auditorium you cannot see. You can see at the top center and the top left, that's the 5.5 acres worth of trees. You can see at the, the top right, the existing stormwater pond. And so this is a surveyed rendering of where this building would be. It would be 30 feet off of this back wall. So 30 feet from wall to wall. And the building itself is just over 10,000 square feet. There's a lot of details that, that just for, for time right now I will not get into. But at least you know kind of where it is. And the other picture, you can go to that one again. And at least you know kind of what it would look like on the outside. I wanted to 
to show you a picture on the inside, but I, I couldn't get a good enough picture of my, my wrinkled up uh, color rendering, but we'll show you in, in a couple of weeks some actual digital PDFs of it so that you can see exactly what the rooms are going to look like, some 3D renderings of the gymnasium area. It is going to be a really, really nice building. We've met uh, with several builders. We've got one that um, has really, in my opinion, kind of taken the lead and been a little bit head and shoulders above the rest thus far. They are a local uh, builder, a reputable company. Um, our, our board has met four times about this building. We have developed a building committee uh, that is made up of two deacons, a trustee and a finance committee member, myself as the chairman, uh, Brother Danny Meadows and Brother Danny Hill are uh, the deacons that are represented on that committee. Brother Kenny Bell is the trustee and then Brother Doug Griebling is the, the member from the finance committee. And so we report to the board. Uh, we've already met with the, uh, one of the builders already. I've met with several builders several times. Uh, we have a tentative budget in hand so that we know about how much it's going to be. And, uh, and from one company, we have not just tentative numbers. We have these are the numbers that you're looking at. And so we've made some headway in the last 45 days or so. We need to do this. This is a pre-engineered building. It's wrapped on the front and a little bit on the side with some brick for aesthetics so it doesn't just look like a metal building. It is a very energy efficient building. And the, the cool thing about this building, as opposed to the building that you're in that's got cinder block uh, walls all the way around it, and this is kind of like a Taj Mahal in comparison to a uh, pre-engineered building. This building took 11 and a half months to build. That building could be built in five months. The moratorium in Craven County has been lifted to the point where we uh, do not have to wait on that. We are able to build right now if we would like to. And because of some, uh, some impervious surface things, we're not having to do some things that we had originally budgeted for uh, when it comes to stormwater permits and redigging another pond and uh, some additional site work. We probably, just because of the size of the building, which can be expanded, uh, right now in this primary um, initial uh, building of it, it keeps us to a point where we would not have to put a sprinkler system in and we would not have to dig an additional pond, which saves us a lot of money, probably saves us to the tune uh, with both of those hundred to $200,000 on the building. Uh, you say, how much is the building going to cost? So right now the budget number turnkey job is less than $700,000. And so let's just do some math. I've talked to our banker a number of times. Scott Wilson's a good friend of mine, goes to Tabernacle Church, and uh, our loan has been with First Citizens. And if we were to, to amortize our loan back to $1.25 billion, which means we would borrow $525,000, all right? $25,000 of that will go to replace the roof on this other building, all right? We're going to replace the roof on this other building and do a couple other things with the a couple of thousand dollars that will be left over. That will be the first thing. In fact, while they're breaking ground here, the roof is going to be replaced with this money that we're going to add to this loan. And then we're going to use that money on top of the loan that we have to go back to $1.25 million. We have between fifty dollars and $55,000 in the building fund roughly right now. We're looking to get that to about $150,000 before we actually have to ignite this loan, which means we got to raise about $100,000. And if we can do all of that, if we can just raise hundred grand, then our payment, amortizing it over 15 years, right now we owe about nine years uh, on our loan. If we go back to 15 years, uh, our payment will be almost $400 less a month than what it is right now. You say, well, how does that make sense? Well, interest rates are lower now than it was when we originally did the loan. And uh, over 15 years, if we keep paying the same payment we're paying right now, we cut off another 20 months. So actually, we're only going to spread our loan out for four years. And so for four years, for the same building payment, we could have a 10,000 square foot facility that we desperately need for our church and school. And it's on our property, which I think all of us would agree that's ideal anyway. Uh, this is something our church has to vote on, and there's a lot more information that I need to give to you, but this is enough at least for you to start praying about something that we believe as a board, as a building committee, and I as your pastor that we need to do and we have to do. Uh, we have commitments over and above our tithes and offerings that will help take care of things like our utilities. This will be even a more, much more efficient building than any of our other buildings and probably uh, even a little bit more efficient because of the units that we're putting in and the bulbs we're putting in, probably even more efficient than this building right here from an energy standpoint, but it's still going to cost. It's going to cost money as far as insurance. Our insurance will go up a little bit. It'll cost money with utilities. Um, it will cost money on a day-to-day -day basis. 
and uh, yet I believe, I believe we can afford it and we cannot afford to do without it. This is one of the most exciting things. Remember I told you about an hour ago, I'm a builder. I love to build. And yet I believe this is a catalyst for greater things that God has in store uh, for our church and we need as a church to do this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up for questions for about nine minutes. And if you've got any questions, of, any, any intelligent questions about this building, don't ask me what color the carpet's going to be, because the truth is there's not going to be any carpet in the building. So there's your answer. Um, some of those things we will, we, will, we will put committees together just like we did with this, and it will not be a free-for-all for everybody's opinion. We will do what we feel like is best for the inside of the building. We'll lean on the builders a lot. We'll lean on people that, that do some of this stuff for, for a living. But, um, but I wonder, do you have any questions about the building itself or uh, time frames or any, anything that you would like to know right out of the gate? Because this is what we need to do. For, for the next three weeks, you're going to pray about this. And I believe the date is... Um, January 24th, I believe that's a Sunday. It's 23rd or 24th, I believe it's 24th. We're going to have a church business meeting. We're actually going to vote on whether or not we move forward with this building. If we can move forward on this building by January the 24th, there's a good chance we can break ground by March 1st. If we can break ground by March 1st, there's a great chance we could be in by, by September the 1st. Which means we, and maybe even before the, we start school the very last week of August, there's a good chance we, we might be able to, to get in there. But again, th this building would take between five and six months to erect. Um, the thing we need to pray for is dry weather at the beginning. If we get it dried in, that's the most important thing. But I wonder, do you have any questions? And I want to answer to the best of my ability. Brother Gary. Yes, sir. That is not, that's not allocated in this plan. We, there will be additional parking spaces added, but because of the gravel that we're taking out, we're actually netting a negative like 10 parking spaces. But down the road, that's, another, that's something we will have to continue to add, expanding to the building and expanding to our parking. Absolutely. The two services has really helped with the parking problem outside of our really big days. That's really helped us. Yes, ma'am. That's a great question. Uh, will the gym hurt upward soccer at all? The gym with the construction will probably take away one field. But if you'll remember last year, that was the field we were only able to use like for three weeks because it was a swamp. And so um, we, myself and Brother David and Brother Matt are trying to work out how we're going to do upward soccer because we understand if we do this, it's going to be right at the beginning of our upward soccer and uh, to keep everybody away from the construction site, we're definitely going to lose one soccer field in doing that. We could if we wanted to, to partner with, that's right, we, if we wanted to partner with, with Temple. The only thing about upper basketball for us is we would only be a place that could can, that can host games because during the upper basketball season, our basketball teams in our school are practicing, and so we wouldn't be able to be a practice facility, but we could be a, a game facility on Saturdays, which they need those two. Yes. Okay. All right. What I told them was, I said, give me a turnkey price. And the only thing that they're not including in the price is the landscaping, which is actually the planting of the bushes and putting the, the mulch. And I've already talked to some of the guys that are in our church that kind of do that, and we've kind of gotten our idea, which is not a whole lot, and we get a lot of it donated. But um, I want a turnkey price so that if we started running close to our numbers and we say, you know what, we can do this or we can do that, we know how much it would actually take off of the price. So there is a, an opportunity for us to do some sweat equity in um, the project, and we're going to really let the, number, the numbers dictate that. You know, if we, if we need to, we will. I'm not opposed to. Of course, you, you well know that. Um, there's some things that we need to let them do, but there's a lot of things that we can do ourselves. A painting, we can paint. Um, uh, we, we're 
uh, not the gym floor, but the, the, the kitchen and the classroom floors, it's actually going to be a, a stained concrete, and we, we, we've done that here. We can do stuff like that. Um, so there, there's definitely some things that we, uh, that we can do. What he was talking about, the wooded area, could you put that, that other uh, picture? Hi, who's that guy? Um, that top left area, that's, we have 13, roughly 13 and a half acres here on our property. Five and a half acres are still wooded. So we have five and a half acres of woods that we can still expand into either other buildings or ball fields or, you know, future, you know, school soccer fields, future baseball fields, future upward fields, things like that. So we definitely have, we have a lot of room this way. We don't have a lot of room this way, and we definitely have very little room this way, but that's kind of where we can grow. Anybody else? Brother Larry. I don't have it available because the, the front part of what he sent me is not changed the way we changed it, number one. Number two, uh, because of the way it was sitting in the folder, it's got like three creases, and every picture I took of it was not good. So uh, I will, during that the business meeting, they'll be able to see. We'll show you a, a, a digital PDF rendering of where the classrooms are. The classrooms, the bathrooms, they're in an L shape. If you can picture a basketball court here and then wrapped here and here with classrooms and bathrooms, that's kind of the, the basic layout. The basic layout of the building is roughly 115 by 87. And so that's, um, that's kind of what we're looking at. Ms. Dawn. Yeah, Cornerstone has a, they've got an upstairs with theirs. Every gym, it, it's, it's similar in some ways. Um, there'll be two. The one thing is we'll have two main entrances. They do not. Um, but theirs is, their court is slid over to one side. And so in, in that respect, yes. Yes, Emma. The expanding is on the, um, go back to the surveyed picture. Uh, if you would, it, the, the Garner Road side, which is this bottom side, that that from that wall, what we did was we took the building and from the ground to the eave is 18 feet. And the reason we went up two feet than what we had originally, in fact, those pictures, go back to one of those color rendered pictures. Um, this color rendering is actually a 16 foot. Those canopies on each side, they're eight feet deep and they're 20 feet long. Um, but from the corner of the building, from the ground to the eave of the building is only 16 feet and then it's a 312 pitch up to about 26 feet something. Um, what we've done is we've, we've raised the building two feet. And so actually now the eave is, from the ground to the eave is 18 feet. The peak of the gymnasium will be at 28 feet. Now, the reason we raised it a little bit was for future expansion so that we could come off of that opposite side that you can't see of this building. We could come off of that with a wing and still have plenty of roof room to be able to come off with the same pitch and it looks symmetrical and be able to put a hallway and then classrooms all the way down one side. And the truth is, if we wanted to come back and do a, a hallway and then a hallway behind it, do classrooms that wrap all the way around it, we could do that as well. So it's one of the good things about a, a building like this. And um, to keep everything within code, we would put that, that wall would be a fire rated wall and you would actually have a, a complete fire separation from that, which I know Gaddis is very thrilled with. So, Anybody else? Jason. Um, about $8,000 a year, yes. No. Um, it, it is, we are going, because I do believe that the church is, is going to do its part. We need you to do your part, but also the school needs to do its part too. We're looking at right now a $200 a year tuition increase, which for what we can offer now is nothing. Um, but when you look at a $200 a year tuition increase per student, and we're going to budget based upon about 180 students. The truth is that increase alone would take care of the utilities for the year. And so that would be well worth it for us. Um, and we hate that because we try to keep our tuition low, but when you get a gymnasium like this, it, 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 to me, it, it's worth $200 a year. Um, it's worth $16 a month. Yes, sir.
Yep. I'm going to host a couple vision banquets, and and we're going to really we're going to do it within the first four months of this year, and we're going to try to get as many people, parents and grandparents. Uh, the truth is, my kids. I've got a list of people that that I have uh, targeted for my own family that I'm going to talk to about helping out with this project. And, um, and some of those are my mom and dad and her mom and dad. And I'll be like, look, you got to come off some of that money. Your grandkids need a gym, you know. And, you, 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 and then you get a, grand, a grandkid going, me, me, and Pa, I need a gym. Okay, here's $18,000, you know. So, so, so but, but we believe they will help. There's no doubt. In fact, I had after that orientation, I had so many parents and grandparents come up to me and say, you tell me what and when. And I'm like, I'll, don't you worry. I wrote your name down. I'm going to tell you what, how much, and when. So I think we'll get a lot of help. Plus our, our golf tournament this year, uh, Brother Benny and I, and then I've got some folks from the, the school that are going to help out. We really need our golf tournament to be $15,000, dollars $20,000, $25,000 big, and all of that's going to be raising money for you know equipment that needs to go into this building. So Let's do a couple more. So Larry? There'll be some income, but it, it it would it would be enough income that would pretty much just take care of the utilities. You know, it's but but it would we want to do stuff that would cover itself. We don't want to lose money if we can help it on stuff like that. Just don't. Correct. We we've talked about that, and that's going to be a, a discussion ongoing for the next several weeks and months. We'll, we'll, by the summertime, we'll have our plan in place for it. Absolutely. Brother Gary, I saw that was your question. Ms. Dawn stole it. Anybody else? Isn't this exciting? It's exciting. I, I, I hope that this is something that you can get excited about. Um, there is great benefit for all of us. Uh, th this will open up our opportunity. I wish I could. Uh, we did an entire Christmas cantata one year in our gymnasium, and uh, we sold dinner tickets, and we were able to, to set up a stage on one side and do it more. Uh, it was almost like Broadway because you had so much space and it was so wide. You can do stuff like that. Um, we, we can, for whatever reason, if we needed to have a big service, we could have big services over there. It's, it, it will really expand what New Life Church and New Bern Christian Academy can do for the kingdom of God, because that's what it's about. What's the state of our church? The state of our church is, I believe, God in the fall of 2015 did some really great things. One of the most anointed revivals that I've been a part of in a long time happened on this campus in November. God did some great things. God did some great things in those prayer meetings that led up to that, and I believe God still has great things in store for his people. But I believe those great things are there and they're waiting for us to step it up. I believe they're, they're there for the taking. If you're willing this year to say, you know what, in 2016, I'm going to step it up a little bit. In every area of my life, I'm going to step it up. God's got great things in store for me. I'm not going to stay on the bottom rung. I'm not going to stay on the ground. I'm going to step it up for the glory of God. Do you want to see God do great things in 2016? I hope and pray you do. Would you bow your heads with me for a word of prayer? Tonight, if If some of these things can be exciting to you, if you want to be a part of them, if you want God to use you to do things in 2016 that you can never even imagine, if you need to close the door on some things in 2015, I, I tonight just want to invite you to gather around this altar with me and just say, Lord, we need you to do great things. And I'm willing to be a part of it. I'm willing to step it up.
so that God can do great things. If that's you, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I just want to ask you to slip out from where you are and get on this altar to say in 2016, Lord, you can count on me. I'm going to step it up. Whatever area God's dealt with your heart about today, Lord, I'm going to step it up. You got the hear my Lord, send me approach. The press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God approach. Lord, I want to step it up. I don't even know if you understand how much we're depending on you. We depend on you. We need you. There's not one among us that's insignificant in the work of God. But we got to have you to step up. I press toward the mark. Of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Father, help us to make much of you. Help us that in everything that we seek, in every path that we follow, every road we take, Lord, Lord, we pray that we would do it for your glory. It would not be about us. It wouldn't be about New Life Church. It wouldn't be about Scott Coghill. It wouldn't be about any of us. It would be about magnifying and honoring and glorifying the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. So help us to glorify you in all that we say and do. Lord, help us to be passionate about getting the gospel to the globe. And Lord, help us to be thirsty to see growth to the body. Not just physical growth. But Lord, even spiritual growth. These are crucial days in the life of a church. These are crucial days in the life of our church. I believe this theme just sums it up, God. We need to step it up now. It's our choice. So help us to be willing to sacrifice what needs to be sacrificed, to put aside what needs to be laid aside, to clear our thinking and our focus so that we can see God in 2016 do great and mighty things. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand to our feet, and uh, again, I want to say thank you for who you are and what you do.